Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the HT Physio Quick Tips series. If you don't know who I am, my name is Will Harlow and I'm the over 50s specialist physio here at HT Physio in Farnham. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to use these walking poles or trekking poles or hiking poles, whatever you want to call them. They're a very common uh, walking aid that my clients like to use. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to measure them up how to use them correctly, what settings to use, and then how to walk with them for maximum efficiency. So these are a great bit of kit, and they're different to what I would call a walking stick or a cane, which is more like a flat handle down here, and that is more of a typical walking aid. These are a little bit different in the fact that they are more athletic. They're used usually for people who want to go on longer walks or hikes, or want to climb tricky terrain, but they can be just as helpful for problems like back pain, knee pain, and hip pain as their cousin, the cane. So why would I use one of these if I was someone over 50? Well, there's a few different reasons I might use one. The first reason is if I was gonna be walking on rough terrain, or if I was gonna be going up a sharp hill or a steep decline, this might be a great bit of kit to use because they help to improve balance. The second reason I might use one is if I was a little bit unsteady of my balance, I wasn't sure whether I could quite trust my sense of balance when I'm walking out and about and I wanted to feel safer, this might be a great tool. And the third reason I might use one of these is if I've got back pain or hip pain or knee pain and I don't feel I need a cane yet, but I would just like something that can slightly reduce that discomfort, then again, one of these might be a good tool. And the options when you've got these are you can either use one or you can use two. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use one or two poles. But the first thing I want to do to make this video most valuable to you is show you how to set these up and how to use them correctly. So this is a walking pole and I've got this one measured up correctly for me. Now I'll show you how to measure it up in a second, but first we're gonna talk about choosing the right pole. When we're looking for a good pole, what we want starting from the top is a strap that you can use to secure your hands on. We want a handle that feels comfortable to grip. You want something nice and solid. Then you want an adjustable pole that you can adjust at two different levels. So you can see here we have one adjustable section here and we have the second adjustable section here. And I will show you how to use uh, the pole correctly in those two sections in a minute. We also want uh, a section at the bottom that you can change. So you can put different bottom uh, segments on to it. Now the other thing we want to make sure we've got is one that's secure. So it's worth having a couple of these out in the shop and having a play around, pushing down on them and see how they feel. This one here has got a nice bit of spring at the bottom, you can see, and that's almost like your suspension. So I'd recommend getting one of those if you can. And you typically get what you pay for. We're in the UK and this cost me 25 pounds for two. So they're not that expensive, but I probably wouldn't bother with the ones that are less than sort of 15, 10 pounds because you're not gonna get the quality that you can get if you spend just slightly more. So now I'm gonna show you how to measure up for a walking pole of the right height. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you, and this is super important, not many people know this, but you must do your measuring up whilst you're wearing your hiking shoes. So if you're gonna go out for a walk, choose the shoes that you normally wear to do so before you start measuring up your stick. That's because if you're walking in shoes like these, you can see I've got a good inch heel. So if I measure up barefoot, then my poles are going to be an inch too high for me because I'm elevated when I'm wearing my shoes. So put your shoes on before you do your measuring up. Now the goal when we measure up for our stick is we want to have a handle at about the right height so that we can keep a near 90 degree angle at the elbow. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, well that's slightly more than 90 degrees. And that is down to my personal preference. So I prefer to have probably 95 degrees here. Some people like 90 degrees. I wouldn't recommend going any uh, less than 90 degrees here. So I'd go between 90 and 95 degrees here. So that is about the ideal height. Now I'll show you how to get to that height with the pole and it would involve adjusting both parts of the stick. 
So when we're adjusting the hiking pole, you can see here you can adjust the top part by swiveling it and turning it like this and you can adjust the bottom part in the same way. Now if you've got a decent hiking pole, what you'll have is numbers running along the top and the bottom of the pole. So what you want to do is get those numbers equal in the top section and the bottom section here. So when I measured myself up, what I first did is I took the middle section of the pole halfway down by unraveling it, moving it around, finding the halfway point, and then screwing it in. And then I did the same thing for the bottom part of the pole. Now that landed me on about 42 inches. I measured up, the pole was way too short, so I went back to measuring again. I added two inches to each point. That's given me 46 inches at the top here and 46 inches at the bottom here. And then I measured up again and that turned out to be a right, about the right height. So you want these numbers to be the same in the top section and the bottom section. If you're going to use two poles, make sure you have both measured at the same height. So now we found the right height for the walking poles when we're walking on flat. But if we knew we were gonna be walking uphill, the way we measure it is slightly different. So if we're walking uphill, as you can imagine, the ground is gonna be higher up in front of us, which means that if we've got our normal height walking poles, they're gonna be raised up a bit, which puts them at the wrong height. So we need a shorter stick if we're walking uphill. And I would recommend adjusting your stick depending on the gradient. So if you're doing a gentle hill, you might take an inch off both sticks. If you're doing quite a sharp hill, you might take two inches off both sticks. Now, if we know we're gonna be coming downhill, the opposite is true. So we're gonna add an inch or add two inches depending on how sharp the gradient is. So you might have to adjust your poles when you're out and about, but they're very easy to adjust. You can do it within about a couple of seconds, really. It just takes unscrewing it, moving it down, screwing it back in again. Make sure you do both. And there we go, you've adjusted it two inches down in uh, the drop of a hat, really. So that's how you adjust your sticks, and that's how you measure up to make sure that you've got your sticks at the right height. So now I'm gonna show you how to change the bottom part of your stick, and this is important depending on which terrain you're walking on. So most sticks come with a default rubber stopper, which is this one here. You can take it off quite easily by unscrewing it. And basically this guy is suitable for terrain where you don't want to damage the terrain. So if you're walking on a site that's protected like Machu Picchu, you might use one of these so it doesn't damage the terrain. And they're quite grippy, they're good for road walking, they're good for practicing inside the house because you're not gonna uh, tear any carpet or anything with these. So these usually come as the default. Now you can see that now I've taken it off, we've got a sharp point on the bottom of the walking pole. And this sharp point is designed for use on ice. So if you happen to be walking in a very cold climate and you're walking on ice or icy terrain or climbing a mountain that's icy, then this might be useful because it digs into the ice slightly and gives you a bit more purchase, okay? And that's what happens when you take the stoppers off. So now we have a couple more uh, shapes of stopper on the bottom. We have this guy here, which is useful in snow. So it's kind of like a flower shape, it's quite wide. It goes on the top like that. And basically it, uh, it stops the stick from sinking into the snow. We have the same thing, which is quite a, a little bit smaller and that's more useful for mud. So if you're doing a muddy walk, then you would put the smaller version of that on. And then we also have this, which is like the, the, the shoe, they call it. And that goes on top like that, shaped like a, uh, like a boot. And that's great for very uneven, rocky terrain because it spreads the load and it has almost this like rocker pattern, okay, like this, so that your stick doesn't slip on dodgy terrain. For today's video, I'm gonna show you with the rubber stopper just because I'm gonna be using it inside, but make sure you get a stick that has a variety of different stoppers so you can walk on different terrains. So first I'm gonna show you how to use one walking pole for maximum efficiency. So I would put the walking pole in the hand of the opposite side of the problem if I'm dealing with a painful problem. So if I've got a sore left knee, I would personally put the pole 
in the right hand. And I covered this in my video where I talked about walking sticks or canes, and it's more important for that, but if you just need a little bit of extra support, I would still follow the same advice, okay? Because as I'm gonna show you in a minute, the way we walk is we swing opposite hand to opposite leg. So when we put the stick down, it's gonna be the opposite leg that also hits the ground, and that is the leg that's going to get the support. So as you can see here, the walking pattern for a walking pole looks like this. We would swing the pole and the opposite leg at the same time, and then step through, keeping the pole on the floor and allowing the pole to come through at the same time as the opposite leg. I'm gonna show you with a bit more uh, distance in a minute, but just to get that pattern um, sort of secured in your mind there, we're gonna go heel down and pole down at the same time. And you want your pole to line up with the front of your foot on that side. Then you're gonna come through pushing both with this foot and the pole, and then the opposite heel comes through. So you can see that my bad side and the pole always work together. Now many people default to just using their dominant hand when they use their pole, but I would definitely recommend if you've got a bad side on your dominant side, try using the pole in your non-dominant hand to see if you can give that side some support. Now you can see there I put the pole down at slightly the wrong point, I put it down at my heel and it just slipped away from me. So that's why we want to put the pole down to line up with the toes of the leg we're trying to support, okay? So I'll show you again in a little bit more uh, distance just so you can see me walking properly using the pole and then you can have a look and see what you think. So now I'm gonna show you how to use two poles and this is what most people would do if they're walking out and about on terrain and they need to use these. Now, the way we use two poles is very similar to the way we walk without poles and I'll show you what I mean by that. So when we're using two poles, or when we're walking normally, I should say, what we tend to do is we swing opposite hand to opposite leg. And that's how a normal walking pattern looks. So if we're walking and we step with our left, it's our right hand that swings forward. And the same is true if we step with our right, it's our left hand that swings forward. So when we're using the poles, nothing changes in that regard. We're going to use what we call a reciprocal pattern, which is where we go opposite hands to opposite legs. So I'll show you how that looks. I'm gonna start with my left foot, and as my left foot moves forward, it's my right hand and the pole that hits the ground. And then if I step through with my right foot, it's my left pole that hits the ground along with my right foot. And again, I'm gonna show you in a bit more detail in a minute, but just to get that pattern solidified in your brain again, so we're gonna put the left foot forward, and as your heel hits the ground, the pole hits the ground in parallel with the front of your foot, okay? And then same again happens with the opposite foot like this. Now you'll notice as I'm stepping forward, one pole is always in contact with the ground, and that is best practice because what the pole behind you is doing is it's propelling you forward and also providing balance as the other pole is off the floor and traveling through the air. So let's have a look at this in a bit more detail so you can see me walk a good length and back and then you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. So here's how I'd walk with just one pole and you can see here I've got it in my right hand. So you're gonna pretend that if I have a bad side, it's this side here, the left side. So this is how the walking pattern would look. So we step forward and use the pole alongside our left foot. I'll show you walking away so you can see the pattern. So the pole lands at the same point as the front of my left foot and the timing that the pole hits the ground is the same time as my left heel hits the ground here. Now you can see I'm being very careful to walk with a heel to toe pattern and I'm using the leverage of the pole to push me forward. So it's on the ground there and it doesn't leave the ground until it's back here. And that's because I can get some nice propulsion by pushing down through the pole to push me forward. So it gives me not just balance, but it also gives me power. It can propel me forward. So now I'm gonna show you how to use two poles. The two poles are very good for people who are walking on rough terrain, as I said, but it's also good for people with back pain 
or hip pain because they can provide some support to just allow you to come forward a little bit without straining your back and it can take some pressure off, especially for people with things like spinal stenosis. So let's have a look at how two poles works instead. We're gonna walk with a reciprocal gait pattern. So as the left foot swings forward, the right pole comes forward. And as the, left, the right foot comes forward, the left pole swings forward like this, okay? So again, I'm showing you slowly, but it might help to see it at real time. So you're gonna walk like this. So you have the pole and your foot hitting the ground at the exact same time. And the area of the ground that gets hit by the pole is the area in line with the front of your foot as your heel hits the ground. And that will provide you with not just the best balance, but also the most propulsion here, because it's the pole that's pushing you through as the other pole is traveling through the air. So using two poles is a brilliant way to get more endurance and more power and more balance as you walk. So if you know you're going on a challenging walk, using two poles is a really, really good idea. Anyway, I hope that's been useful for you. If it has, please do leave me a comment below because I love to read your thoughts. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get more from me, you can pick up a copy of my book. It's called Thriving Beyond 50 and you can find it on Amazon using the link below. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.